Let's be cool right here. Hey, I got you guys over here at Marfugal News. Um, he's talking about the Cascadian subduction zone. If you guys don't know what that is, please go research it. It's a huge subject. Adam is actually currently doing a documentary on this subject. But um, we had some news come across here. Um, at the end of his live stream, I guess one of his subscribers pointed him to this. Um, we have like a, a slow slippage event going on. And what it is, is the ocean floor is actually slipping underneath the, the plate over on the west coast, which is essentially what the, the Cascadian subduction zone is. When this thing completely slips, they're predicting that a nine point, at least a 9.2 earthquake and a huge tsunami that's just going to be devastating. Um, you know, and whether or not this happens in our lifetime or not, um, we all hope it doesn't. Uh, none of us can say 100% when, but we do need to look when we start seeing things happen. Um, and that's exactly what this is about. Um, they're getting, what I, what, like I said a second ago, a slow slippage event. In other words, it's moving slow and it's slipping underneath itself. Now, I'm going to let you listen to a little bit of what he has to say here because I think it's very, very valid. I'm not going to show you the whole video because I, I really think you guys should go over and check him out. He says it way better than I could. Um, number one, number two, he deserves the traffic for this. He, he's the one that did the work. So. so as many of you guys know, I just finished up my live stream and I wanted to give you guys warning. Um, apparently we are having a slow slip event in the Northwest. Now people ask, why does that matter? Well, we are sitting by the Cascadia subduction zone, home of the future 9.2 earthquake and tsunami. Now, I wanted to uh, show you some of the real-time tremor maps. Uh, this is easily reachable, and I will end up putting... Okay, guys, I'm, I'm going to leave a link to this also. I'm going to leave a link to this video also, um, but I'll leave a link to this tremor map. Um, again, it's real-time. So, you know, if they get these tremors, even big earthquakes, I would assume, will show up on here. Um, I'm not I'm not really familiar with this particular tool, Um uh, you know, I've navigated it a couple times since watching this video. Um, it's easy. Pretty much you can click on any of those things over there to the right. And it'll show you what it's talking about at that time. But you can tell, guys. I mean, something's going on here. Now, when, when I see stuff like this, I start looking at other tools. Okay? And what I mean by tools, not me. I'm a tool. I know. Everybody thinks so. <laughs> anyway, um... I think that, you know, we need to look at other stuff to try to help uh, validate some of this thing, some of these things that we see. Now, I don't know what came first, the chicken or the egg. And what I mean by that is that I'm going to take you over here and show you the Schumann resonance, okay? This is the frequency we vibrate at. Most of us know what this is, but for those who don't, we're supposed to vibrate. The earth puts off a, a frequency of 7.83 hertz. Okay, and it's about right here. So anything above or below that is not optimal. <coughs> now, again, I have to reiterate here, guys. We don't know how high this goes. Okay, because 40 hertz is as high as this chart shows. This could be busting up as far as, you know, we just don't know. Um, I think there's a tool out there you can go look at. I don't know where it's at to see exactly how high it is vibrating at. But everything has a resonance, okay? And the Earth's resonance or frequency is called the Schumann resonance. Now, we have a resonance for each one of us walking around. We have a resonance that we, that we vibrate at, okay? Um, most humans are right around 5, 5 hertz. So, um, when, when stuff is out of the ordinary, you know, stuff is directly related to mental illness. Um, there's been so many studies done on that. Um, even physical ailments. People have ringing in your ears is one of the main things, guys, that I point to. If you guys ever, if your ears don't hardly ever ring and then all of a sudden they start ringing and you can't figure out why, Go check this human resonance out. Um, and again, I'll leave a link. I usually go to it through the Mr. MBB3 uh, webpage. Um, he has a link. It says human resonance right on it. You just click and it takes you right to the real time. Okay. Um, I'll leave a link to that too. But <laughs> again, it would make sense that if something's slow slipping or even like big jolts from, you know, bigger earthquakes and things, wouldn't that change our, our vibration? 
at least for a time period. So that's what I mean by what came first, the chicken or the egg. Did the, did the shoot, did we start vibrating at a, at a resonance that's causing this thing to slip or is the slippage actually causing the change in vibration? And at some point they're both going to be doing it, but we just need to know what started it. Um, now, why do I say started it? Because <laughs> this is where it gets odd and very weird and why this is so nuts that I even, I don't even know why. I thought this. This is what's crazy sometimes. Maybe it's because I look at the stuff all the time. I, I just simply don't know why I think about stuff like this sometimes. But look at the time, okay? 1900. Now that immediately struck a bell with me. Okay, that's at 7 p.m. Now the date, 316, 1900, right? It's still going on. This event hasn't stopped with the Schumann Resonance. Okay, and first thing I'm going to say is this is an extremely long event. We don't see these guys. We just don't. Normally, we'll see, you know, events like that, about that wide. Okay, it lasts about that long. Then you get a, a pretty good break. It looks like these little, the darker blues. Then you might get another one. You might get another small one here, there, whatever. But you never, ever get these big, long ones. Long in duration is what I'm saying. So, <laughs> why does uh, 1900 on the 16th, why does that mean anything? Well, this is, oops, 1900, when this event started on the 16th. But look, guys, look at the month. I reported on this when this happened the last time, okay? Now, this is exactly to the hour, one month, one month, exactly to, not even to the roundabout area, none of that, exactly 7 p.m. on the 16th, and then you go back to the current one, 7 p.m. on the 16th of March. Now, we got to watch here, guys, and see when this event stops. It's still currently going on. And I want to keep my eye on it, guys, and see what it does. Now, if this thing ends up ending at 1900, which is what it did here on the 2nd, which was, again, this makes it very odd also, 24 hours. Exactly 24 hours. You know, it's like, and again, I have to say this too. This did not ramp up and then ramp down. This went straight, okay? When you see that, <laughs> that means something started very abruptly and ended very abruptly, like somebody flipping a switch. And that's why I'm saying it like that. Because in my mind, if this stuff is exact number one, exactly a month away, exactly down to the hour, does it, does it or does it not make sense that that would be something intelligently done? Not something that was natural, is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Again, exactly down to the hour, exactly one month away, these events started at the same exact time. Now, like I said, if they end exactly at the same time again, man, I just <laughs> I just don't even know. You know, you know what the odds of even what we're just now talking about right here are of happening? I mean, those odds are just so strong, astrological that you just can't even compute it, probably. I mean, yeah, it would just be such a huge, huge number. Uh, man, it just, it's still blowing my mind that this is actually what's happening. Now, again, is this what's, is, is this vibration or whatever causes this vibration causing the slip to happen? Um, I don't know. Um, it looks to me like the slip started before we seen this start okay because again this is real time i'm not sure exactly when that slippage started uh it might have started you know I, i'm not exactly sure so you know i'm kind of leaning towards whatever's going on this is all related okay it, i guess it really doesn't even matter what happened first it's just a matter that this is all going on at the same time 
this is just so strange I, I just don't know what to say um again <laughs> i mean yeah <laughs> it just wow okay and then this here um this is solar winds and, and this is what we got going on currently with our magnetosphere i've shown that a hundred times um this showed up on uh Sechi. this is hi2 this is on the 14th um i we don't really see these kinds of signatures very often guys I don't know that I've ever seen one exactly like this before anyway. Um, okay, and what do I mean by that? You see this big out there by itself. <laughs> okay. Um, it did come from the sun, at least the direction of. And this also happened right around it. This is the HI-1. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I, I just, I don't know. And I know I've said that a thousand times, but man, it just blows my mind. It really does. And, oh, man. <laughs> but anyway, guys, um, yeah, I think we need to be paying attention to what's actually happening here. Um, I'll keep an eye on it a little bit more here. Um, we are going to go over here real quick and look at uh, the current magnetosphere because I think, you know, when we get hit with solar stuff, guys, and we react... Uh, sometimes those kinds of things can cause earthquakes. We know that. They're related. Um, solar winds and our connection to the sun. Also, um, CMEs and things have been, you know, directly related to uh, earthquakes. Um, you know, so all this could all be related. Uh, you know, and like I said, this is just the current magnetosphere here. We'll just... Take a look. This is the velocity. All right. I don't normally take you guys to this tool, which I think this tool is better than the other one. But you can obviously see waves of solar winds coming in. I mean, look at that. Okay. The sun's off to the left on this particular uh, model, guys. And what I find interesting, if you watch over here, like on our flanks, you see those big areas of dark red. This boof, boof. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's just, that's, we kind of expected this. We had the solar winds and those couple, those CMEs that were happening there. Now, this is the density. This is the, um, the ion density, okay? Um, I've talked about that before. I'm not going to go in depth on, on that, on this one, on this video. I'm trying to keep the time down here a little bit. Um, I could sit here and talk about this for a, a very long time because there's so much going on. Um, obviously, you guys can see that. I mean, you know, that's just, it, it is. It's, it's, that is a very, very disrupted signature, okay? But again, we knew we were going to be getting hit with solar winds and, you know, energy from the CMEs. So... You know, this is to be expected. You know, we're handling it fine because our our uh, KP charts are uh, showing that you know we're we're handling it really well. So, but this is the pressure. This is what is very intense to look at. Okay, very seldom do we see these big dark areas of red actually make it into our area of the Earth itself. Okay, you can clearly see, and this has happened before, but this is this is an extended period of time. Okay, this is actually making it to inside our atmosphere for, far enough that it looks to me, you know, because the, the Earth is the inner circle here. Okay, the outer circle is um, representing the our uh, parts of our atmosphere, like um, our upper atmosphere, okay? Um, I think that might be even, I don't, I don't know if this one is actually saying that's our satellite orbits, but um, regardless, this is uh, far enough in that it's it's actually, according to this, would be affecting us on the surface. It's that far in. Um, <coughs> does it mean we're going to see anything? No. Okay, guys. I mean, we might, I don't think we'll see any kind of electrical disruptions. I really don't. Might be small ones, but... But this can have a very much effect on earthquakes and all those things we just got through talking about, okay? 
So that's why I'm bringing this up. So when this is in that far, I mean, <laughs> and plus the human residents, plus the reports of the tremors on the West Coast, um, I really think that this is all related at some level, okay? Um, we'll watch this, this time lapse here that it's doing for us. Um, and again, this is the most recent one as I'm doing this video. It's about quarter till nine you know, Eastern Standard Time. And the, the pressure is not letting up. Okay, it's staying pretty constant. Um, I would have to say the, the more it stays constant, I don't know. I, I would think that the earth would get tired, just to be honest. Um, and again, we you know we can go over and look at the other. And what we'll, we'll, what we'll do is we'll just stop in there real quick. Okay, um, this would just be the one the one capture. This is what this one looks like currently. Okay. Um, yeah, and this one's even elevated. That one usually hangs around 300. This, that's the that's related to the wind speed. Okay. Um, anytime that's above 300, that means it's kind of high. Um, I seen it a few minutes ago. It was like at 700. We've seen it up, you know, 1.6, 1.7 before. But this is what it looks like currently. And this this one here is something we don't talk about much. But these are the northern and northern and southern hemisphere i've talked about this before but this is pressure on our poles um you see how those are kind of uh askew and pretty pretty intense it's not something way out of the ordinary and then the ion density here on this chart and what we have to keep in mind on these charts right here they will actually change the value of these <laughs> according to the um the event that's going on and the, uh, the reason why they do that i guess is just so they can be i don't know exactly the reason but probably so they can kind of uh, get a better idea of when something's moving sharply okay usually this thing is it reads you're seeing stuff between uh 2.5 and i think you're like five at the top end Right now, it's starting at 7 and going to 12. I've seen it go up to 40 or 50 before, okay? So you can imagine if it started at 2 and there was a 50 that happened, you know, it would be a huge spike, okay? Um, so this just gives us a better idea of movement and how the, the percentage of change, all right? And that's why we look at that. But, again, guys, um, let's go over and look at the current Schumann resonance. This is at Mr. MBB3. Um, I, I went to that magnetosphere tool over at uh, planetxnews.org. Um, again, I go there often. You guys know that. Um, it's real easy to go to those links. But here's this link. And again, guys, this is continuing. This is not even stopping. I mean, wow. What can I say? Um, yeah. So I think that we need to watch this. And again, if this thing, if this event stops exactly at 1900, which would be at 7 p.m. tomorrow, um, <laughs> wow, which is 7 p.m. UTC, so it'd be actually, you know, whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about. 24 hour time period here, um, but yeah, guys. So, and I got some more stuff to share with you, but I don't want this video to go much longer. Um, you guys have heard me. Uh, ramble on enough so anyway guys um god bless and i will be coming back with another video here probably tomorrow maybe even later on tonight not really sure yet um, but if something else pops off as far as the earthquake stuff i'll pop on and and tell you guys what's up or what i know but anyway guys again god bless yeshua saves and uh you can drink this kool-aid